You think? We discussed the past year of turn one in 2022, question active. So this is about the circular motion. A small sphere of mass is attached to the ends of a string with length r. The sphere is rolled in a vertical circular path about a fixed point with constant speed. So I mentioned about this, uh, probably two cases of uh, vertical circular path. One is uh, constant speed means that uh, we don't talk about the conservation of energy. Okay, the linear speed is constant, so we uh, everything is almost uh, constant all the way. Okay, except there is a variable that is changing. Okay, I mentioned in the video, so you can watch back uh, if you want. Okay, so derive an expression for the tension in string at any point which make an angle with the vertical when passing through O. Okay, so I guess this is not something new. Okay, for those who have the Oxford textbook, you should have came across uh, with the uh, derivations. So basically, uh, okay, we take this diagram as a reference. Okay, we have a string okay, that has a tangent cross and also the weight, okay, the mass. Uh, okay, let's say here is the sphere. So here we have the tangent cross, okay, we have the weight, okay, and that's all for the forces involved in this test. So let's say we have a velocity, okay, linear speed, okay, moving in a counterclockwise. So what we are looking at is about the tension and the weight. So we will usually would, uh, would do the component in parallel to the tension force. So here we will start with the force is equal to uh, mv square of r. Okay, that is the centripetal force. So every symbol we should use uh, with the symbol provided in the questions, like the length of the string is capital R, so we use the capital R here. Okay, and then the net force, okay, the centripetal force is the net force, okay, and it's always toward the center. Okay, remember about that. So why we have tension minus mg cos theta because we have a net force toward the center. So it's the T minus mg cos theta. Okay, that is the cos theta. Okay, equals to mv square over r. Finally, we have the tension is equals to mv square over r plus mg cos theta. So you can draw a diagram okay, as a reference on where is uh, the theta okay, so from the vertical view. So it would be better if it comes with a diagram. So you can no need to explain too much what is the theta, okay, how we can get the theta. So from the equations, we also can roughly discuss about the change in the tension. Okay, So when the theta is zero degree, okay, so what we have is a cos zero is the equal to what? Okay, the maximum value. So from what we have learned that the tension here would be the maximum k okay, at the bottom, would be the maximum. And then when it goes to the top, okay, we have a uh, cost 180, okay, which is equal to negative one. So here, okay, at the top, at the top, okay, we have our uh, mv square over r minus mg. So this is where the tension cost is minimum. So this should be the equations that describe the change in the tension okay, at any point in the circular part. So we move on to question B. A ball of mass 0.3 kg is attached to a string of length 1.5 meter okay, and suspended from P to make a conical pendulum as shown in the diagram below. So I have discussed a similar question before. So a ball, the ball will around a horizontal circle and swing at an angle of 15 degrees to the vertical axis. Determine the speed of the ball, determine the centripetal acceleration of the ball, Calculate the tension in the string to keep the ball in circular motion. So let's try to solve the questions. So first, we need to look at the diagram. Okay, we have the tension along the string. We have the mass, okay, and the weight is always a downward force. And also another thing that we cannot ignore is about the centripetal force, okay, because it moves in a circular motions, and the direction is always toward the center. So we can see that the centripetal force is provided by the horizontal component of the tension. So now what we're going to do is to create two equations. Okay, one is the vertical component. Okay, we can see the T cos 15 equals to mg. Okay, and then the next one is the horizontal component. Okay, it is a T sin 15 is the centripetal force mv square of r. So now we're going to solve for the speed and we need to solve also the tension later on. So I guess we don't calculate about, uh, so we can ignore about the tension first. So what we can do is we can perform the substitutions that the T tension is equal to mg over cos 15. And put in here, you would get mg tangent 15. Okay, equal to mv squared over r. So something to take note that the radius here is the radius of the circular path not the string, okay, not the length of the string, okay, one of the most common mistakes made by students. So you need to take note of that, okay, that the radius here could be expressed as the length of the string, 
sine 15 okay, based on the trigonometric. So here we can rearrange the equations that uh, v squared will be equal to g multiply l sine 15. Okay, that's the radius multiply tangent 15. So now we can do the calculation. 1 times 1.5 times sine 15 times tangent. Okay, so answer for the velocity is 1.01 meter per second. We move on to the next one, which is about the centripetal accelerations. So simple, A equal to V squared over R. So we have the V 1.01 from the previous calculation and also the radius 1.5 sine 15. Okay, so what we have is that the assertion is an uh, answer square divided by okay, 1.5 sine 15. So answer is 2.63. Okay, so the assertion is 2.63 meter per second square. And then the last one is about the tension. So you can use any of the formula. So you can use mv square over r, but maybe I just use a uh, t cos 15 equals to mg. Okay, that's the uh, faster. Yeah, go to mg over cos uh, 15. Okay, so we have the mass is 0 0.3, multiply 9.81, divide by cos 15. So the tension would be equal to 3.04. 3.05 Newton. So I guess there should be not much problem here. We move on to the last one. Add three characteristics of the centripetal acceleration for a uniform circular motion of the pole. So you just write down what you understand about the centripetal accelerations. And these are a few samples from me. Okay, so we can mention about the direction is always to the center of the circular path. Okay, it is caused by the resultant force acted on the moving object, which is also toward the center. And then you also can mention about the change in velocity, which we use it to find out the direction of the acceleration. And then we also can probably can mention about the relationship, okay, such as the higher the linear velocity, the higher the value, or the faster the centripetal accelerations. So I guess that's all for the discussion, and thank you for watching.